blight. How will you end it? Is that all? It is surrounded by an ocean of darkspawn. How will you reach it? If you reach it, how will you slay it? You say you are a Grey Warden. I have heard stories of this order. Great strategists and peerless warriors. That is what we hear of the Wardens. So far, I am not impressed. Evidently not. It remains only to see what you are here for. We stand ready to fight at your side against the Blight, Warden. Ferelden has never seen an army such as you will command. Not but our claws and teeth. Tend to your other recruits, lest they feel inadequate. Yes? Well, here I am. What is meant by someone like me? Did you think I was always a cloistered sister? The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken. The Chantry does not pride, and you should. I desired time apart from the world. I was a traveling minstrel in Orle. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. What do you need? Ask away. Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it, and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? I never meant it that way. Don't be like that. Let's see. I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. You're telling me I was banished to the kitchens to scour the pots more times than I can count. And that's a lot. I, I can count pretty high. The Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. Oh, I suppose the Chantry life is good enough for some. Here, we have the chance to fight against the Blight. To actually do some good instead of sitting in a temple somewhere. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would never... I wouldn't have. He was. A good man who didn't deserve his fate. That much I'm sure of. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. Sitting, as you observed.
It's what you asked. I did. Parshera. Was there anything else? Speak, then. Ours wear the faces of men. No, they do not have the excuse of demons within them. Darkspawn, abominations, plagues, and storms. Men are far more dangerous than these. One moment of betrayal can bring more ruin than an earthquake. You know this. Darkspawn are not our concern in the islands. Tal Vashoth are. They say they are Grey Ones. True in the knowledge of themselves. They are gaping holes where men used to be. Nothing can fill them. There was a village in the mountains of Seheron. Farmers. They grew cinnamon and nutmeg trees in perfectly ordered rows. There would always be one person waiting. A foreman, a harvester, rank didn't matter. Often they would say nothing. Simply watch as we worked to examine the empty house, a new one each time, that had once been the home of a colleague, a friend. We always made a point of searching. Now and then a body would turn up in a river eaten by rain and crows. More often we found nothing. Even in the worst parts of the jungle the villagers would send someone with us to see the tiniest piece of bone or cloth. Anything contained the possibility of their lost friend. Must we speak of this? We could be fighting something. Very well. Isn't it the nature of a wound to bleed? I have no more answers than you. Why do we fight the Darkspawn? Why do the Darkspawn fight us? Now and then. Do the reasons matter? It makes little difference to those they fight. Tell me then. Why do you fight? How will you know when you get it? In the Antam, we are told of the enemy. Assume he loves as you love, hates as you hate, and fights just as hard as you. It's a lie, of course. But does that matter, so long as you stand and believe you know your enemy? The Talvashoth wish us dead, and we wish to go on living. The point of our war is war. As you wish. I await your command. At times, perhaps, a world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, it was to the trees. For a time, but one can only remain a child for so long. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. She was not. Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been.
Do I not? I am still an apostate mage, even if I have left the wilds. The Darkspawn are yet undefeated? No, there is much that remains. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely. But such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror. But such fantasies have no place amidst reality. Flowers? For me? They smell lovely. And there's something so familiar about them. These, these were my mother's flowers. She would sprinkle the dry petals amongst her clothes. Oh, they smell just like her. Thank you so much. If there's anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. Hmm. I suppose since you told me about you being a Grey Warden, it's only fitting for me to be as open. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately Frostback Mountains. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. Our kingdoms once spanned the length of Thedos, from majestic Orzammar to Kalsharok to glittering Darmalin far to the west. They say the gold and silver veins ran so thick through the stone of Darmalin that the entire city sparkled. The Darkspawn took it all, of course. One by one, the old tigers fell, and then all that was left was Orzammar. But we were talking about how I ended up here, weren't we? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit, and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the Darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. Nobles, they're touchy like that. Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I'd been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tigers. They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. That's exactly how I see it. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never look back. I thank the stone every single day. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. I bring word, sire. There are demands from the Banorn that you step down from the Regency. They are said to be gathering their forces, as are your allies. It appears it will be civil war after all, Despite the Darkspawn, pity. I also have an interesting report. There seem to be Grey Wardens who survived Ostagar. How, I don't know. But they will act against you. I have arranged for a... a solution. With your leave. The Antivan Crows send their regards. An assassin. Against Grey Wardens, we will need the very best. <laughs> and the most expensive. Just get it done.
You have coins, stranger? The doors of Mar closed off. Old Tegrin can give you a discount. Fine weapon and arms. Dwarven made. There's two things I'm here for. Travel or trade. Understand? Excuse me, I, um, do you have a moment? Greetings, and welcome to Garen Garenson's Luxury Goods Shop. Wow, there are a lot of you. And I've never seen one of those before. The things they come up with. What was I saying? Right. I have some lovely things here. Lyrium. Enhanced, of course. What have you there? A mirror? It is... just the same as the mirror which Flemeth smashed on the ground so long ago. It is incredible that you found one so like it. I am uncertain what to say. You must wish something in return, certainly. I have... Never received a gift. Not one that did not also come with a price attached. But I would be a fool not to accept such a gesture with grace. Your gift is most thoughtful. Thank you. You know, you never did tell me how you passed the time in that cage for so long. No, I didn't. So... what did you do in there? A training exercise. I would observe an object, and then try to think of all the words in your language which began with the same letter as its name. That? Wait, just wait. You're joking again, aren't you? No. You are not telling me that you played I Spy against yourself for 20 days? There are a lot of things in Lothering that begin with G. Oh, thank the Maker. We need help. They attacked the wagon. Please help us. Follow me. I'll take you to them.
I rather thought I would wake up dead, or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. Oh, so you kept me around to have a bit of fun, did you? Hmm. But the purpose behind torture is usually to interrogate, yes? In that case, despite the potential for fun, perhaps I'll save you a bit of time and get right to the point. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. <laughs> Why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Loyalty is an interesting concept. If you wish, and you're done interrogating me, we can discuss it further. Very well. Ask, and thou shalt receive. A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Logan, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the crows would have informed your Logan of the results. If he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead. Or I should be, at least, as far as the crows are concerned. No need to see Logan then. What can I say, huh? I am an eternal optimist. Although the chances of succeeding at this point seem a bit slim, don't they? <laughs> no. no, I don't suppose you'd find that funny, would you? Then, unless you're quite stuck on cutting my throat or something equally gruesome, perhaps you'd care to hear a proposal. Unsuccessfully. Besides, someone in your position can't take these things so personally, can you? Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause. So, let me serve you instead. I happen to be a very loyal person, up until the point where someone expects me to die for failing. That's not a fault, really, is it? I mean, unless you're the sort who would do the same thing, in which case I don't come very well recommended, I suppose. To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the Crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. What? You're taking the assassin with us now? Does that really seem like a good idea? Hmm. All right. All right. I see your point. Still, if there was a sign we were desperate, I think it just knocked on the door and said hello. A fine plan. But I would examine your food and drink far more closely from now on, were I you. That's excellent advice for anyone. I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. This should be easy enough. Right. Let's get started. 